Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a review of the Sketch Marker line of markers. These markers I've known about for a couple of years because I follow a lot of Russian artists on Instagram because the talent is unbelievable with some of these Russian marker artists and watercolor artists. So there's several that I follow. And I've seen the sketch markers show up in their reels and in their photos. And um, I always thought it was kind of interesting because we never had that brand here in the United States. Well, I was recently reached out to buy sketch marker and they contacted me because they are now selling on Amazon. They're just starting to sell on Amazon I think worldwide, but definitely in the United States, and they were wondering if I would like to review their markers. And I said sure, because I'm always curious about new markers, and I like to have a, a pretty extensive database of marker reviews here on the channel. Now, this is not a budget marker. I wanna state that right off the bat, so these are not gonna be for everybody, but um, they are the marker range that has the largest range of colors that I've ever seen. Um, so we're gonna go through the different attributes, we'll test them out, and I'll show you some artworks that I did with these, and then you can decide for yourself whether they will be for you or not. So this is a set that they sent me. Uh, this is how it comes. Now you can get these markers open stock, which means you can buy them individually. You can also get replacement nibs and ink refills for any of the colors, although they may be a little more difficult to find in the United States. But um, I did see their press kit and they are going to start offering the refill kits or the refill inks in sets in next year anyway. So um, I don't know about individually refills because it's things get really expensive on Amazon when third parties try to list individual markers or individual ink refills or individual anything because of the you know they've got a factor in shipping costs and all that stuff for people that just order one thing so um, that might not be the best bet but um, but they're offering them in sets and they'll have the refills in sets as well so this comes with a sleeve around it, which has some information about the markers. You have a little description about the markers in several languages. You've got a color swatch here to give you an idea of what colors will come in the set. And um, you've just got uh, just a little bit of barcode, you know, the, the basic, the basic stuff. It's on kind of a nice matte cardstock. And then we've got a soft folio here. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine per leaf of this little book and um, these markers are pretty easy to take in and out of the storage which is nice. There is a color palette here for you to fill in. Now this is a color swatch of all 448 colors they offer. I believe they currently have 400 colors right now that you can get and there's an additional 48 colors that will be released next year I do believe. And then there is um, you know, there's just a space where each color has a place for you to do one, two, or three layers of the color so you can determine how uh, how much of a range you have from each color, which is kind of nice. This paper is just kind of like a, a thin marker paper type material, so I, I think if I was going to swatch in here, I would put a, just a piece of paper in between as I'm swatching just to make sure. But um, I would definitely keep this if you're considering getting more markers so that you can swatch them all in one book and you don't have a bunch of different swatches floating around. And uh, it also comes with a little coloring page that you can play with your markers. I have to say this paper is not the best for blending. It is definitely more of a marker paper, but it was fun to have something that you could just uh, use right out of the bat. Um, I'm gonna set this, actually I'll put these in the little pocket. There's a pocket in the back that you could put fine liners, a pencil, uh, whatever you want, you know whatever you want to store in there, which is kind of handy. You could put your swatch on, like if you know you always use um, Express It Blending Card, or you always use Nina Classic Crest, or you always use Bristol, you could do your swatch on that and keep it right in your bag so that it's always ready to go. And now let's take a look at one of the markers. So when I first got these, I thought they felt kind of light, so I actually picked up a Copic and held it, hold them together and it's a, it seems to be the same weight as a Copic sketch. I was thinking these might be closer to the size of a chow, but I will grab a Copic sketch just so you can... I feel like that's a standard unit of measure, measurement. A Copic sketch marker is a standard using unit of measurement when you're talking about markers. But uh, there's a sketch versus a uh, sketch marker brush. I think the name sounds kind of generic, and I wonder if it has something to do with the translation maybe from Russian to English. Uh, you've got a round barrel as opposed to an oval barrel. But it's roughly about the same length here. And we'll look at the nibs in a minute. I'm going to test it out on one of the papers. And actually, I think I'll get a darker Copic because that would be a little bit handier, wouldn't it? To actually compare it next to a color that's 
a little bit more similar. Well, we'll get one of these orangey reds. I'll just have that handy so we can compare in a little bit. Of course, my Copics are older, so we'll have to keep that in consideration as we're as we're looking. Uh, they also sent me uh, the fine liners, which I'll show you here, but you'll see in some of the artwork. This is a six pack. I did see these on Amazon. Did I see them on Amazon? I might have seen them on Marker Universe, actually. Um, I've been trying to find some more information about this brand, so I did look around to see if they were sell sold anywhere else, and the company Marker Universe has these um, these products in stock. They do appear to be more expensive than what Amazon is offering or th what was on the actual sketch marker website in Russia. They do have an English version of their website and the prices look very reasonable. I don't know what shipping to America is like uh, from there, but this uh, set gives you a range from a 0 0.05 all the way up to a 0 0.7. Uh, these work really well, very smooth writing. I have no complaints there and I use them quite a bit. So that they're, they're kind of like your standard fine liners. They will work well with alcohol markers and watercolor. So you can use them for both. Just like pretty much any um, like fine liner you're gonna find nowadays, I find that um, there's a lot of them out there and they all work pretty well for the most part. So, so there's that. So first thing I did with these markers was I made a, sw a swatch chart right here in the sketchbook that they sent me. And so here you can see the range of the colors. Now let's look at this set. This is the desert set and there is a bunch of different um, curated sets that they offer. They offer portrait sets and pastel sets and you know the basic, um, well they have quite a few actually curated sets. Um, they also have like larger multi-packs if you want to like get a set of 48 or a set of 96. They offer their markers in the brush chisel version, also a bullet chisel version. And they also have water-based markers. So. Um, that's uh, that's something to consider. In sets on Amazon, the brushes are around three fifty a piece, so they're not a budget marker. They're definitely more in line with like a Copic Chow as far as price. But I did find them to be very um, very good quality. The nibs and the inks are Japanese. The body is made in China. Um, the papers are made like this one. I think is made in Latvia, and the other two pads are made in Germany. So it seems like they just source the materials wherever they can get their needs met. I guess. But uh, looking at the arrangement in the desert set, which I liked, um, I thought they were gonna send me the portrait set because um, they gave me a few to choose from. And I think I picked the 24 portrait set and they actually sent me the 36 desert set. I like this. The only thing that I think might have been a little more useful, like BR64 and O74, those two colors are very similar. And in like a um, limited palette like this to have like two yellows that are pretty close, those two tans that are pretty close, um, this weird pink that doesn't really blend or match or go with anything else, that's kind of too bad because that one's almost... It, it just, like, if I cover this up, this whole palette seems to be cohesive. When I have that showing, it's like it's too pink to match with these guys or those guys, but these will match with that. And I can even gradient these colors into that purpley blue, but that color, it's like it's too, it's too cold to match with these kind of corally reds. It's just kind of a weird color. Um, so I think that if they could have omitted, like, maybe... Um, that color and that color, then they in put a cup and that color and put in three more colors that like maybe a brighter green so you could do more landscapey stuff. Or, um, like those colors are so light. I did actually use a BR15, I don't think I used a 025, but those colors are almost so light that it's really, it's it's almost like it's almost a color of the paper. Um, it's not as useful when you have a really limited set like this, but um, it could it could be a situation where they're trying to not duplicate between their sets, so that if you buy a set and then you buy another set, that you're not getting a bunch of doubles. And that's probably the case with 448 colors. They probably can do that. So um, I don't. That's not that's not a criticism of the marker. That's just a criticism of this particular set. In case you were trying to determine what set you might want to get. So right when I got these, I was very excited to use them out. And by the way, I did the, I used the liner and just kind of did a line of each of the different size um, points, just so you can kind of see. Um, I don't notice a huge difference between the 02 and the 07 in that range, but that's fine with me because the 03 is like the one I always use up the first. So having those four kind of very similar and then a couple finer ones, that works for me. But if you wanted a more varied line weight, you might want to choose something that's got a brush pen tip or, you know, a thicker 
uh, a thicker nib there. So then I went on to this page and I was uh, sitting in my kitchen when I opened this up and uh, my pepper mill, salt shaker, and butter dish were out so I decided I would draw those. And even though these are like bright rainbow colors, um, I was able to, there was enough of a good value range here, like having that violet and that brown, I could mix those together or layer them rather to get almost a black. And you know, we have a really good value range here so I didn't have any problem drawing this. Because, because as long as you have your values right, the colors really don't matter that much. And I really enjoyed that. Now, one thing I didn't enjoy about this is that this paper bleeds through to the next sheet. And um, the reason I actually started drawing this because I bled some from, I think it was like I had some of that gray uh, bled, bled from that over here. So I just decided to draw on there, but I forgot to put another piece of paper in. So it bled onto the back. But then here I took the fine liners and just kind of doodled over it so that I'd have like two for one basically, which is kind of something fun you can do with this sketchbook. But just remember to put a piece of paper in between these pages if you use it. I like that this is square because it's going to be easy to share artwork on Instagram if you like to do that. And it's just a kind of a fun format because generally your sketchbooks will come like a portrait or landscape. So having that square format I just, I just think personally is kind of fun. But um, don't forget to put paper in between because the colors will bleed through. And uh, that's all I did in this book, but very smooth paper, uh, great for layering. I didn't um, really find that it blended that easy, but because there's so many light shades in this, I really didn't need to blend out. I could just kind of layer up until I got what I wanted, which was um, which was nice. So um, so there's my my thoughts on the on the uh, the color range. And then I did another artwork on their Bristol paper. I like Bristol. Bristol's a really nice um, a nice surface. I would say. If you want to get a paper that's going to do a lot, go for Bristol because you can use alcohol markers, you can use your um, water-based markers, you can use light watercolor, you can use colored pencil. There's a lot you can do on it and it's um, it's a nice quality paper. It's got a nice thickness to it. You could use it for card making if you wanted to. It's just it's just nice. It's especially for card makers where you might want to color with colored pencils one day, with marker alcohol markers and with water-based markers or watercolors. It kind of does everything pretty good. But I really do like it for alcohol markers. And I did this sketch here of a of a blue uh, well, I, I actually looked up photos of bluebirds. That's what was what I typed in. I got this and it looks I, I don't think it's a blue jay, but it does um, because of the crust, it does kind of look like a blue jay. But I thought with the color palette that we had, that would be a good thing to do. And it was very, these are very easy to use markers. They didn't get a lot of bleed through on the back. I did take this out of the pad to work on it because I was afraid it might. But um, I feel like that paper held up really well and it blended really well on this paper. So this paper is great for blending uh, if you're looking for a pad that will do that. This gives you, does it say how many sheets are in here? Uh, I think it will say on Amazon, it doesn't, if it says it here, I'm not looking at the uh, right, oh, 20 sheets. And I like the size, A5. I never know what that, what those correlate to, so let me just get on my little measuring grid here. Six by eight and a quarter or so. So that's about what, the, what an A5 is, but uh, very easy to do. I found that I could work pretty quickly with these markers, which is nice, very intuitive. It felt almost like painting, which, um, which I like. And then on the marker paper, which I did take out of the pad because I didn't know if it was going to bleed through. And I don't think it would. I think that there's an, it says it wouldn't. There's like a coating on the back. So you can see it's really pale on this side. And this is the, the good side here. And I just did a little, uh, kind of like a landscape where there's kind of like a, a cliff rock formation um, in the sea. So I was just kind of, kind of seeing what I could do with that range of colors. And that worked out pretty well. So uh, I like this marker paper. It was e this marker paper was easier to work on than say the Arteza marker paper, which I feel like I fight with. Um, this, even though marker paper is better for layering than blending, I didn't feel like I was fighting it. But that could also be this arrangement of colors, which is really easy to use because of all the muted and pale pastel colors that are in there. So let's take a look at the marker. We have our brush tip on one end, and we have our chisel tip on the opposite end. And I'm just going to look in the caps to see if they seem to be, oh gosh, they seem to be the same. The caps seem to be the same either way. And do the caps post? Yes, they, well, the caps will post. It's not a really snug fit, but they do post. Um, as far as removing the caps, I think they're pretty easy to remove. They do snap on nice and, um, nice and snugly, which is nice. You get like that kind of satisfying click so you know the cap is on there and it seems to be on there nice and tight. The collar is on the chisel end, which will be a little different than a lot of other markers. Usually markers will put the little stripe on the brush end 
because uh, you might want to find that easier, but maybe in um, uh, maybe in Russia, people prefer the chisel end, or that's the one they use more often. So that's what the uh, chisel end looks like. That's a side, and this is on the skinny edge. So like when I was doing the water, I used the chisel edge to do the water and the little waves, and then when I was doing the waves down here, I used the brush edge so that I could get like um, thicker, more responsive like wave uh, ripples. And then for our brush nib, you can get a nice fine line. You can go thick to thin. And this is really nice and flexible. I'm going to um, hold it up here so hopefully you can kind of see how, how it bends. And look at how much flex I can get. And I don't feel like I'm going to fray that marker. You're not going to do that with an Ohuhu or a... Um, Artify or any of those markers that have the fiber tips. They're just not going to bend that way and if you do bend them like that They're going to fray fast. So um, These have that uh, that foam rubber nib like a Copic and I'll show you a Copic right here. So As you can see on the Copic, you've got the stripe on the um, on the end with the brush and I'll do the same thing. We'll do thin lines do the flick and then I'll just show you the uh, like I actually think this the sketch marker might be a little bit more flexible well probably so because this is an older marker I've had this since like 2009 but I, I'd say they're equally they're equally responsive um, I'll try that again I gotta, I gotta feel them right next to each other I would say they're about the same size, but you know what I think it is? I think that the sketch marker nib is uh, just like maybe like um, a millimeter or two millimeters longer. And I think that's what's giving me the extra flex. I think the nibs are, are essentially um, very, very comparable. They're both Japanese nibs. Uh, they both, both use Japanese ink. I couldn't find a similarity in the ink numbering systems of sketch markers with any of the other markers that I have, like any of the other uh, budget markers or even more expensive markers that I have, but um, I find they weigh the same. I thought these felt lighter, but when I do them side by side, it's like, no, they're, they're, they seem to be the same weight. Um, so yeah, I think they, I think you've got a Copic quality here. You've got a range of 448 colors. Copic does 350, I think. So it's the biggest range of markers that I know of. And, um, they seem to really be committed to this line of products because they do have the replacement inks. Now the replacement inks I was seeing on the sketch marker site and I had the English um, version, the English language selected and I believe it said it was like $4.40, under $5 for a 20 milliliter or 20 cc refill which is the size of the old Copic reinkers. Um, and but then I'm thinking maybe that was pounds because it had like the, the Great Britain like flag in it. So I'm wondering if it might be pounds and not dollars. So I don't want to quote a price there. Like I said, the, the markers are in sets around 350 on Amazon. So not a budget marker, but cheaper than a Copic Sketch, about the same price as a Copic Chow. Um, but I understand if you don't want to wait to see how available the inks and nibs are before you uh, invest. I reckon that the nibs are about the same size. They look to be about the same size as a Copic. So they're probably interchangeable, which means I hope that they, they offer those. Um, I didn't see how much the nibs cost. I actually just went back on the sketch marker site, but I couldn't find them. Um, uh, but if they're comparable, if they're more, if they're cheaper than the Copic nibs, I would definitely give them a try because um, Copic nibs run about two fifty to three dollars a pop, and that's just kind of pricey. I would love to be able to find a bulk, um, a bulk option for good quality nibs, so I could swap out some of my cheapy, cheapy ones and um, and do that. But uh, but I'm happy with them, uh, happy with these. This uh, What I probably will end up doing, I do like this wallet because it's easy to get the markers in and out and it's not, because I don't have so many colors here, it's not cumbersome, but um, I generally don't use markers in wallets because I don't like the whole thing being open and having to flip through. I generally have them either in a case like this or I just grab the ones I need out of the rack um, in my studio. I think I'll probably put these in my marker rack if I can find room for them because there are so many muted and uh, pastel unique colors that I um, that I don't have from my other open stock markers. I think that would be more, a more useful way for me to 
use these rather than just in this muted color palette since it is kind of um, uh, it doesn't have the full range of colors that I that I tend to use. I tend to go for more brighter stuff, but I do like to have those muted colors. But uh, I'd say the quality of the marker is great, and um, not a budget marker, but definitely on par with Copic, and definitely something to consider if you are looking to get started in markers, and maybe you want a range of markers that will be where you can get any color you can think of. Now, a resource I want to share with you is that Marker Universe has a chart, and it... Um, and actually, I want to share this this resource with you anyway, even if you have no interest in these markers, because they have a chart that compares the sketch marker range of 448 colors with the Copix range and the Shinhan Touch range. And if you followed my channel for a while, you know that the Shinhan markers run on the same, or or most of our budget markers, I would say probably 75% of the budget markers out there run on the Shinhan Touch color numbering system. So if you're looking for an equivalent to a Copic color, you could use that chart to find it in the Shinhan color, which would be like your your Artics, the Uhuhu Classics. Um, almost every marker <laughs> that has come out. I do notice a, a, a bunch of different numbering systems coming out, and I don't know if, if companies are doing that to diversify themselves from other companies, but um, but it's a nice resource if you're trying to find an equivalent to a Copic color because I feel like a lot of tutorials out there are put out in Copic numbers and um, Copics are expensive and a lot of us have, you know, tried the budget markers and been pretty happy with them. Now other markers that I think are comparable to the to these sketch markers would be Art and Fly. Uh, and I'll actually, you know what, I'll just grab, a, I'll grab an Art and Fly to show you. I think I want to get a darker one though. I said, yeah, I'm going to grab one, but I don't want to grab a really light color. Artfly runs on the Shinhan color system. I also think that Alta New is a pretty comparable, um, a pretty comparable marker. I'm just seeing if I can grab one right after that. I got one right here. And I would also say bi Biennial Brush is comparable, but I don't have those in here. They're in their box of 72 in the other room. And also Blick Studio, I would say, is very comparable. So let's take a look at these. And I would say... Um, the, your best bet is to do whatever you think will fit your hand better. So let me just open up a sheet here. So Blick Studio and Copics, they're the closest in size at um, like the barrel. This is a Squoval and this is an oval, so very, very similar. The All to New is a triangular barrel, kind of like the Art X markers are, but they also have the Japanese nib, sort of the, the Blick Studio. The, um, the, of course, the sketch marker, and then I would say Art and Fly. We could take a look at all of these, all of these nibs here, and compare. Art and Fly does, and actually, I think all of these markers have nibs. Altenew has a has a uh, has their collar on the fine tip. They have a fine tip and a brush because that's they're marketed to stampers. So, when stampers are dealing with smaller images to color, it's a little bit more useful for them. So if we look at all these nibs, they're all pretty darn similar. I would say maybe the Altenu is a smidgen bigger, but we can do just a little little response test here. And my Blick Studio one feels a little bit uh, stiffer actually than the Copic, but still pretty good. Blick Studios have gone up in price though, so I'm not like recommending them like I used to because their refills used to be very affordable and now their refills have gotten pretty expensive. Well, not pretty expensive, but they used to be four or three something and now they're seven, so I think when Copic increased their price, they decided to too. I, I, you know, I almost think the sketch marker does have the most responsive nib, at least for the way that I like to, I like to draw an art and fly. And Art and Fly has refills too. They're on the Shinhan uh, coloring numbering system. So if you go to Art and Fly's website, you can actually find refills for any of those Shinhan colors, or at least 200 of them. But anyway, um, I, I think all of these are, are wonderful markers. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of a comparison. The, the thing with the brush nibs are um, a lot of them do not have this, uh, that foamy rubber nib. Actually, Arteza's, those have come out, those have the foamy rubber nibs too. So also would be the Bayanyo and the Arteza new Everblend Ultra Markers. Those also have the Japanese style foamy um, rubber nibs. But all the other brush markers, even though they're pretty good and definitely good for the price because they're, you know, 
under a dollar a marker, marker a lot of times, they have the fiber nibs that just don't bend like that. They're good, they're easier to blend with than chisel nibs, but they just don't have that that um, that flexibility that these guys do. So that's that's the, the big difference between the two. I'm not saying avoid the other kind, they're certainly more budget friendly. These are gonna run you um, like around 350 a marker, oh, except for this one, this will be more like eight. But um, you know, these are all kind of like the 350 a marker, Copic equivalent, you know, they're still half the price of Copic. So, you know, you really can't, uh, you really can't complain. So hopefully you found that helpful. I really like these markers. I would be excited to find um, more colors in that. And um, they definitely would go, are gonna go in the rack with my Copics and Look Studios and Art and Flies because I know I'm gonna, you know, I know I'm gonna like the way they, the way they behave and the way they react. Uh, as far as the de desert color palette, I think it's nice, but I don't think it's the most useful color palette. So just kind of keep that in mind because I do think on Amazon, they're gonna start with sets first and then they'll probably bring out open, uh, they may or may not bring out open stock. I don't know, it just, um, it's tricky because it's so expensive to sell open stock on Amazon if you're a third party seller. So um, maybe they'll have some really big sets where, uh, where you can get a huge variety of colors, uh, but they are more expensive. So, you know, if you're gonna get a pack of 100 markers, you're probably gonna pay $350 to $500 because of what they cost. They're not a budget product. Those Japanese nibs, man, I don't know why, but they're so expensive. Anytime you have a marker that's got that foam rubber nib, it's gonna cost you more. Um, and that marker will go will cost you more like three fifty versus a dollar in the the uh, fiber nibs. So um, you know it's a quality thing. You're getting a better quality and you you pay more for it. But yeah, I give these a thumbs up. I think they're good. I think they're worth it. And if you're looking for a Copic alternative where you get an equivalent quality for less money and the upkeep is cheaper on them because they're refill inks, you get you get double the ink for the same price or a little bit less um, than Copics. I would say give these a give these a look. I love the way they feel. I love the way, I love the responsiveness of it. And um, I've had a really fun time using these. So I hope you found this review useful. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments and I will um, I will help you. But I found just jumping right in with these markers to be probably the most intuitive markers I've used. Could be that I have the experience of, of using a bunch of different markers, but, um, and it could be this color palette that's pretty easy to work with because there's, there's so many pale and muted colors. In any event, I like them, I recommend them, and um, I hope you enjoyed this review. Please give me a thumbs up if you did, and until next time, happy crafting. Bye.